So the first example is two 6 volt batteries in series versus parallel and how the voltage and amp hour rating will change depending on how you wire them. So if we have two 6 volt batteries and they are rated for 100 amp hours each and we wire them in series, what will happen is that the voltage will go up but the amp hours will stay the same. So for two 6 volt 100 amp hour batteries in series, you will actually have a 12 volt 100 amp hour battery. But if instead you were to wire these in parallel, something will change. The voltage will stay the same, but the amp hours will increase. So let's take those two 6 volt batteries in the previous example and wire them in parallel. Now we will have a 6 volt battery, but at 200 amp hours. The voltage stays the same and the amp hours will go up in a parallel connection. Next example is rating the capacity of batteries. You cannot use amp hour rating. You have to multiply the voltage of the battery by the amp hour rating and you'll have what's called the watt hour rating and you can use that number to compare the capacity of different batteries. So let's have an example. If you have a six volt battery and it's rated for 100 amp hours, and you have a 24 volt battery, and it's rated for 25 amp hours, they have the same capacity. Because if you multiply six by 100, the amp hour rating, you'll have 600. If you multiply 24, by 25, you will have 600, and that is the watt hour rating. So even though these two batteries seem like one's a lot bigger than the other one, the six volt has 100 amp hours, and the 24 volt only has 25 amp hours, you would think that they have a different capacity, but they are exactly the same. And depending on how you wire them, will change the voltage or the amp hours in your system. Now let's do a quick example for solar panels. If you have two of them in parallel, it doesn't matter what the amp rating is. All that matters is the voltage. In a parallel connection with solar panels, they need to be the same voltage. One could be producing 100 amps, the other one could be producing one amp, and it will not matter. They just need to have the same voltage. And in a parallel connection with solar panels, each one is independent of the others. If one is producing power, it will still produce power even if all the other ones are not producing any power. They are independent in a parallel connection. Now let's have a series solar panel connection example. If you have two solar panels in series, they need to be the same amp rating. So whether one is 100 volts and the other one is one volt, but they both produce 10 amps each, you can series connect them. The power of both panels is dependent on both of them being in the sunshine. If one of them is shaded, both of them will not produce any power at all. So it's very different than a parallel connection. So in a solar power system, you want to series connect your solar panels to the point where it's a high enough voltage so you have minimal losses through the wires. But you don't want to series connect so that if one little solar panel is shaded, the whole solar panel array is producing nothing. You want to parallel connect them in groups so that if some of them are shaded, you're still producing power. Now let's compare the watt load of different appliances. So let's say we have a 100 volt appliance and it needs 10 amps. That means if you combine those two metrics, you will have 1000 watts. That appliance uses 1000 watts. Let's say that instead we have another appliance and it needs 100 amps, but it's only at 10 volts it will still require 1000 watts. So this trips a lot of people up, but you need to realize that the wattage or the total power consumed by these appliances is variable on both the volts and the amps. Now the next example has to do with converters and what a converter does is it takes one voltage and turns it into another voltage. And so what this means is that if you put a certain amount of amps through one side, a different amp rating will come out the other side with a converter. So let's say I have 10 amps at 24 volts going into the converter. What will come out at 12 volts? Because the amperage will go up because we're using a lower voltage, the amps will actually double. So if you have 24 volts and 10 amps going into a converter, what will come out is 20 amps at 12 volts. It's the same amount of power, but you have different volt and amp ratings because it's a converter. And this is why the 12 volt side has thicker gauge wires and the 24 volt size has small wires. This is why, because you have different amount of amps going through each wire set. The next example is solar panels and open circuit voltage. Open circuit voltage means that the circuit is open. That means that the solar panel leads are not connected to anything. And the voltage when you test a solar panel in full sunshine will be the open circuit voltage. If you take the solar panel leads and connect it to a charge controller, the voltage will drop because the power is being used. 
And this confuses a lot of people. If you have a 12 volt solar power system and you see 20 volts on the solar panel, you're like, wait, why is it doing that? Why is it creating such a high voltage? And this is because if you connect that solar panel to a charge controller, it will drop to 15 or 16 volts. And that's the perfect voltage for a 12 volt battery. Because if you have a flooded lead acid 12 volt battery, it needs to charge up to 15 volts. So this 20 volt open circuit panel works really well only when connected to a 12 volt system. The next example has to do with solar charge controllers. So these are rated in amps at the output. So if you have a 20 amp solar charge controller, how many amps can go in and out of that thing? So the amps going out of that controller is going to be at the voltage of your battery. This is why solar charge controllers have two ratings, one at 12 volts and one at 24 volts. If you're building a 48 volt system and you have a charge controller rated for that, it will have a separate rating for that voltage of battery. And so let's take this example. Let's think about a 20 amp solar charge controller. If we connect a 20 amp output solar panel, but it's rated at 100 volts, and we are connecting this to a 12 volt battery, what will happen is you will burn out that solar charge controller. Even though you have 20 amps going into a 20 amp controller, that controller needs to change the volts and the amps for that battery and it will drop the voltage. So if we have 100 volts coming from the solar panel, but we have a 12 volt battery, that means that we need to drop the voltage and when we drop the voltage, the amperage will go sky high. And if our solar panel is producing 100 volts at 20 amps, that means it's producing 2000 watts. And if we take 2000 and we divide it by 12, that means it's 166 amps that needs to go out of that controller. And that is more than 20 amps. So even though you have 20 amps going into the controller, 166 amps would have to come out. And that's why these solar charge controllers are rated in amps at the output and not at the input because the input doesn't tell you the total power. So typically when you want to rate a solar charge controller, go on the manufacturer's website, find the manual and figure out how many watts it can handle and that will give you a better idea of what that solar charge controller is capable of doing because if you just use the amps and you look at your solar panels it might confuse you and depending on how you wire those solar panels it can confuse you a lot because you could wire a ton of solar panels in series and it'll have a very low amperage but it will still burn out your solar charge controller you need to make sure that what's coming out of the solar charge controller will be what the solar charge controller is rated for so let's say I have a thousand watts of solar panel, right? What I do is I divide it by 12, the voltage of my battery bank or 24 if that's your voltage. And what you will find is 83 amps is what will come out. Even if that solar panel array is only producing one or 10 amps or whatever, it doesn't matter. You need to calculate the amps going out of the solar charge controller to tell you what that solar charge controller can handle. I hope that made sense. That was a lot. But yeah, people confuse that all the time. Solar charge controllers are rated in amps at the output, not the input. They are also rated by voltage, but you usually don't have to worry about that because they're rated to like 150 volts. And most people run their systems for off-grid solar power systems at like 40 volts. The next example is C ratings for batteries. In the C rate, tells you how many amps that battery can produce at a voltage and it also tells you how many amps it can charge at. So how much power is going into the battery and how much power is going out. So let's say we have a 12 volt 100 amp hour battery. If it has a 1C discharge rate that means that it can produce 100 amps continuously out. If it has a 2C discharge rate, that means it can produce 200 amps at 12 volts. If it has a 4C rate, it's 400 amps, and so on and so forth. The number can get larger and larger, but let's say we have a battery that has a low discharge rate, and instead of like 100 amps for a 1C rate, it goes the other way and it's only 50 amps and it's a 100 amp hour battery. What we need is a different symbol and this is depicted by a C and then a slash and then the number. Let's say it can only discharge 50 amps continuous. So we don't have a number for that. We can't do a 0.5 C. What we do is a C slash two. And so that will tell you that if you take the original amp hours and you cut it in half, that is the amp hour continuous discharge C rate. So let's say we have a 100 amp hour 12 volt battery and we can only discharge 50 amps continuous. We will depict that by a C slash two. 
Let's say the same battery can only discharge 25 amps. We will say that's a C slash four because it's one fourth of the original amp hour rating at the battery's voltage. So yeah, a lot of people get confused by this. If you have a three C, that means you take the amp hours and you times it by three. If you have a C slash three, you take it and you divide it and it becomes smaller. So if you had a C slash three for 100 amp hour, it would not be 300 amp hours. It'd be 33 amp hours. And this can confuse a lot of people. So the C rate tells you how much power is going in or out of a battery. So if you're charging or discharging a lithium battery, you need to know the C rate because the C rate will tell you what size charger that you can use with it and what size inverter or when in a high discharge application, how much power you can take out of that battery. And if you exceed the discharge or charge rate, that battery will fall apart internally. Like the chemistry will change and it will alter it. And for a quick example of that, let's say we have a lithium polymer battery and we short the leads. If you short the leads, that is an extremely high discharge C rating. It's like thousands of amps instantly. Whatever that wire can pass through it will pass through it with a lithium polymer battery. And that C rating is so high that it damages that battery and it will actually puff up and you can't use that battery anymore. So the C ratings for charging and discharging are very important if you want your battery to last a long time. With solar power, we have very, very low C rates because what's going in and what's going out is very small and we have large batteries. So this doesn't apply to us, but if you're building an electric car, it will apply to you a lot and you need to use that C rating to design your whole system around. Now let's do a quick example of Faradaic efficiency. So if you have a battery and you wanna know how efficient it is, it's storing energy, because there will be losses. Whenever you store energy in any battery, there will be a little bit of a loss. And so what you do is if you have 100 watt hours going into a battery and only 99 watt hours comes out, that means that the Faradaic efficiency is 99%. So another example is a flooded lead acid battery. What's the Faradaic efficiency? Let's say we put 100 watt hours into that battery, but we only get 70 watt hours out of it. That means that the Faradaic efficiency is 70%. Very simple, I know the name scares you, but Faradaic efficiency just tells you how much went in and how much went out and what that percent efficiency is. For the next example, we're gonna learn about how batteries are wired in parallel or series and how people write that down on paper. So if you have four batteries and they're all wired in series, you can say that that battery bank is a 4S battery because you have four batteries in series. If you have four batteries in parallel, you can say they are a 4P battery bank. Let's say we have four in series strings and they are all in parallel. That will mean that it's a 4S 4P because you have four batteries in series and you have four of those and those are all in parallel. So you have 16 batteries total. So let's do a quick example of this. Let's say we have 16 six volt batteries and each one's rated for 100 amp hours. Let's say that we take four of them and connect them in series. That will give us 24 volts at 100 amp hours. Let's say we take four four in series batteries and we parallel connect all four of these. What you will have is 24 volts but 400 amp hours for all 16 batteries. And you will call this a 4S 4P battery bank. And when you understand these S and P ratings, you can know when a BMS can work for your system. So BMS and cell balancers and balance chargers are rated in S. So it will say it's a 6S cell balancer. It's an 8S or a 9S cell balancer. That means that it can handle six or five or whatever cells in series. So let's say I have a 5S battery and I need to balance it or buy a BMS for it. I need to make sure that it can handle 5S. If it can handle 10S, that's okay too. You just need a larger number than your battery. If you buy a really high quality BMS and it's rated for 16S, that means that you can use any battery bank up to 16 battery cells in series. And understanding these numbers for configuring battery banks makes things a lot more simpler. If you go on eBay and you wanna find some used lithium polymer cells and it says that it's a 6S battery, you know that there's six cells and that you need a 6S cell balancer. So I hope that made sense. I really want people to understand these points. These are very commonly confused and I hope you guys learned a lot from this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.